Welcome back to the Thoughtful Techie Cloud YouTube channel. If you're new here, on this channel I talk about AWS Cloud Computing, teach you AWS Cloud Computing best practices, and help you break into tech and gain those tech skills. This video is a little bit different than the videos I normally do. Most of the videos I've done to date are tutorial based, but I'm going to start incorporating what I call some talking head videos where I can share some insights with you. Today, I want to talk to you about how I went from help desk support to an Amazon Web Services Solutions Architect. Now, that title makes it sound like it's a quick jump, but it's actually about a 15 year journey from help desk all the way up to AWS. Now, keep in mind, though, the cloud didn't even exist until 2006. I started my career in the early, early 2000s. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Before we get into that help desk position, I just kind of wanted to tell you a little bit about me first in case this is your first time meeting me. I'm Greg Powell, and I'm currently a senior solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. And I've always loved technology, and I've always loved helping people. And this is what this YouTube channel is about. I'm at a point in my career now with over 20 years of tech industry experience where it's very rewarding and fulfilling for me to give back to you and the greater community. And I'm really interested in helping people learn technology and break into tech. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Now, before we get into that help desk job, uh, I was always kind of this very, uh, I would say computer nerd type kid. I mean, I, I didn't, you know, look like the nerd from the outside with the pocket protector and the thick glasses with the tape wrapped around it. But uh, I've always been kind of a introverted, very reserved and very introspective. So you could give me uh, some sort of technical manual to read and I'd read it from cover to cover over the course of, uh, of several days. I've always loved working with computers. And I think the, the root of my success is I've always been not only fascinated with technology, but had a natural curiosity to want to learn technologies. And that's why I think I've progressed very well in my career. So that's just a little tip for you. If you want to get into tech, learning and being curious needs to be something that you're naturally interested in because the technology, technology industry is always changing. And in 2022 went onward, even now, faster than ever. So I started help desk in the early 2000s. Now, what got me that help desk job is a certification called CompTIA A+. CompTIA is a great certification. It's been around a long time. The nice thing about it is it's a vendor neutral certification that teaches you hardware and software and operating systems and virtualization and cloud and security and networking and a wide assortment of general IT best practices. Now, it's not a stopping point, it's a starting point. So if you have no tech experience, you would start with this. Uh, back when I first started my help desk job, prior to that, I had a ton of technical experience, but I needed to prove to an employer, given that it was my first professional IT job, that uh, I was in fact certified in knowing what I could do. I, I couldn't just say, yeah, I can do this. I needed to actually demonstrate it. And I demonstrated that with that CompTIA A plus certification. And that landed me that help desk job. Now that help desk job was a tier one help desk support. And I supported what were called business applications. So of course I'm doing the things like, you know, the password resets, but beyond that, I'm troubleshooting things like error messages in the applications. I'm looking in the knowledge databases that tier two and tier three support uh, would define when t tickets were escalated and we found out root cause analysis. Those things would be entered into the knowledge base and I would have that data for which to work with. Uh, we really didn't have scripts back then. Uh, a lot of the help desk and contact centers now are like in robotic mode where no matter what you call in, they tell you to you know restart your computer or unplug your cable modem and plug it back in. I feel as though back then, even though it was a tier one help desk job, I, I was able to 
operate with a, a certain degree of autonomy. At least I was, because that's, that's just how I like to work. You know, I don't like to have somebody breathing over my shoulder, do this, do that. Uh, I've got enough uh, know-how in, in the technical realm to navigate successfully. So I did that job for about a year and take anywhere from 30 to 40. 50 calls a day. 50 was kind of on the high side. If there were deployments and, and new releases, some days it would go as high as 60. So you have those inbound calls coming in constantly. But I'll tell you something interesting that I can remember. Uh, if you like help desk and that's what you want to do and you don't see anything beyond that, then uh, that's okay if, that, if that's what makes you happy. Now for me, Beginning my career in help desk was just the beginning, but I always knew I wanted to go beyond that and do something else. So I was always studying, always looking at new certifications, and any downtime I had on the help desk in between calls, I always had uh, like a book open and reading. And sometimes in the second shift or the what's called the third shift, which is like the graveyard shift overnight, uh, you know, those lapses between calls were big. So I was always studying and always gaining new skills. Because if you don't gain those new skills, you could be stuck on that help desk for quite a long time. So fast forward to you know a year later, I'm off the help desk, and then I, I get a, another job where it's a, a mass migration, not in the sense that you would think of today. This was desktops. So I, had, I was on contract to migrate an organization, huge organization, from Windows 95 to Windows XP, that was all the rage back then, kind of dating myself. And that Windows 95 to Windows XP migration, that went on for about, I guess it was a year. My brain cells are kind of <laughs> been fried out a little bit. So it was about a year. That was very tactical, very script driven. The process was pretty much the same. There, you know, there were some gotchas and some of the configurations and things, but those will be woven in back into the process. And it was a pretty smooth, clean process. So I did that about a year. Then my next job was also help desk, but this was different though, because it wasn't just uh, on the phones. It was actually a mixture of phone support, but then when things couldn't be resolved remotely from the phone or logging into a person's desktop remotely and kind of troubleshooting things, we would uh, dispatch within the building there, corporate building, and do uh, hands-on support right there in the person's office or in the person's cube. And then sometimes we had to bring up the laptops up to our lab where we would troubleshoot, and remove viruses, and those types of things. From that point, I transitioned on to, I think it was a let's see, network administrator role. So I'm doing back then Novell and... Well, Windows Active Directory type stuff for it was a year and a half, two years, somewhere around there. And then from there, I worked in a network operations center. So this was essentially an event-based, kind of an incident management type of role where I was mo monitoring enterprise data centers across the globe for a, uh, for a consulting company. And that was a, a really great job that I enjoyed and uh, it felt like a, a, an upgrade relative to what I had been doing. And then from there, I got a new job as a sysadmin. And I was the only sysadmin for a data center for my project. And it was a, a smaller project, so I call it a data center. But it was really a, probably about a set of mm, six, 42 you uh, racks, uh, if any of you can relate to that. And uh, I had tons of servers, uh, network attached storage, direct attached storage, file shares, databases, your typical data center stack. Now, where things get really interesting is from that sysadmin job, for the next five years after that, I went into a network engineering role. This was, was one of my favorite jobs back in the day because the problems were more complex and the project life cycles were longer. Also, with this particular job, I got a chance to work with more cross-functional teams for a longer length of time. 
And that was a really great job that I enjoyed. I particularly enjoyed network engineering, uh, the seven layers of the OSI model, working at layer two and layer three and uh, writing a number of configurations for Juniper equipment and Cisco equipment. Those are some really good years. And I worked on implementing some great projects. I would say that particular job really stretched me because uh, as I mentioned earlier, the problem definitions of some of those projects that I worked on were really complex and I had to do research. I had to learn things to fill in knowledge gaps to really expand myself and uh, everything turned out well and I think I'm a better person for it. Now, after that job, I jump into a consulting role and this is getting really close right before I joined AWS. In the consulting role, I joined as a specialist, and at that time, my specialty was data center, infrastructure, and cloud. And, this, and in, in this particular role, I was working with a, a organization that was working on building up their cloud practice even more, so they wanted to hire folks that had a lot of, uh, a lot of skill sets in that particular area. And during that time is when I realized I really want to do cloud jobs full time, not just kind of every now and again or based on whatever client I had, whether or not they wanted to go into cloud or not. I wanted to uh, control my own destiny and make sure that I was only working cloud projects. And that's when I focused on my AWS certifications, working on my AWS Solution Architect Associate. Now keep in mind, this was back probably around the 2015 timeframe. So there's about, uh, I think 11 AWS certifications here now. Back then, uh, there was a handful. A lot of the certifications that exist now didn't even exist. And the reason I was particularly interested in AWS is because I would watch the reInvent conferences on the YouTube channel and I was completely blown away because keep in mind, I'm a technologist. I love technology and I was just blown away at the scale of that AWS could achieve for its customers. And I really wanted to be a part of that because I had never worked on anything of that scale and of that large of a scope prior. So that's why I chose AWS. So yeah, uh, that's the journey from help desk to AWS. That's kind of the short and concise version as much as I could cram almost 15 years into it. And I've spent the last six years at AWS, currently a senior solutions architect supporting startups. And I absolutely love it. It's been the best job I've ever had. I've had a lot of great jobs. This is my all time favorite job that I've ever had here working as a solution architect at AWS. And it's been a big inspiration as to why I wanted to start my YouTube channel so I could help you learn AWS cloud computing skills, break into tech, and even offer you any career insight and development that I can based on my 20 plus years of experience. We've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.